So go ahead. So we are students from National Alignment uh, Institute. Uh, we uh, we have to do uh, group activities. Uh, one of our, our missions is to talk all way foreigner about Taiwanese. Okay. Uh, firstly, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is... Oh, careful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my name is Douglas, Douglas Nienheis, and I'm from Canada. Yes. Um, in Myanmar, uh, which place is your favorite? My favorite place was the uh, Mingun Pagoda. Do you know Mingun Pagoda? Yes, I know. Near uh, Mandalay. It's a big, unfinished pagoda. So I went there by boat. It was a very interesting experience. So that was my favorite place, Mingun. Another place, another east. Pardon me? Did you have uh, another east? Is your favorite place? Another place? Yes. Like a favorite place? Yes. Um, let's see. I think, well, of course, Bagan. My, yeah, probably my second favorite, all of Bagan because you can rent an e-bike there oh, yes. and then you can just drive everywhere on the e-bike, see all the temples. It was a very historic but kind of casual place too. You know, you can just relax there. It's a good experience to go to Bagan. Oh, yes. uh, what's your favorite Myanmar food? Um, so far, I don't know if it's Myanmar food, but I really like uh, palata. palata. Is that Myanmar food? Yeah. Yes. yeah? That is from India. India. Okay, yes. origin from India. Yes. But I had palata here in the market many times. It was very uh, tasty. So, how, how about Mohinga? You know Mohinga? Or, Mohinga? Yes. Yeah, it's good. I had it. The first time I had it, I didn't know what it was. I saw Mohinga, I ordered it, and it was good. It's a kind of fish yes. noodles for breakfast. Yes. Yeah, yes. It, it's, it's very good. Yes. So, what what food should I try next? What do you recommend? From Mosque, you have you have to take you should take the gentleman. Okay. Yes. All right. I'll try that next. Um, so, lapat lapat tok is Myanmar traditional food. Okay. Yes. Another one. All right. So, uh, another food is sticky rice. You know. Sticky rice. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we say kao nye Yes, okay. this is Myanmar traditional food. Okay, yes. I'll try that one too. Now I'm interviewing you. Now, where do you go? Today I'm going to the Uzina Pagoda. I'm, yeah. I, is that how you say it? Is that proper? Uzina? Yeah. I'm just going to walk there and uh, take some video as I go to the pagoda. Oh yeah, what you like uh, Indian, Indian uh, tradition food? Do you li uh, what you like Indian? Oh, of course, I like Indian food. Oh, Everybody yeah. does, right? So, uh, uh, coconut ice. Uh, what you like coconut ice? Uh, it's coconut ice cream. Oh, okay. Yeah, coconut rice. Coconut, coconut rice. Coconut rice, rice. Oh, yeah. and kitchen curry. Okay, that's good so, too. Yeah, this is so good. Any other so questions? How many, how many times have you been in Myanmar? I've been here two times. Two times. So this is my second visit. Oh, uh, two times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to recommend something special place from your country? Oh, in my country? Well, I think the best place to go is the Rocky Mountains. If you go near Vancouver, there's the Rocky Mountains. If you go to Banff, um, beautiful mountains there. It's probably the most beautiful part of Canada, so that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> uh, this is my team walk. Okay. And what is your subject in school? Are you all studying English? Oh, yeah. No, no. no. Uh, youth and leadership. Loot, youth and leadership. Youth and leadership. Uh, the okay. name is uh, National, Alignment. National Alignment Institute. Mm -hmm. So why, why do you have to interview a foreigner? Oh, what is the purpose? Uh, this is for group activities. Uh, we have six teams. Uh, we are uh, matching My each team. other. Okay. Uh, so uh, one of our mission is to talk with foreigners about Taiwanese, and we have other nine missions too. 
Okay. All right. So good luck on your mission. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, can you take me photo uh, all together? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, what time? What time? No. no? Uh, oh, just, uh, just, uh, uh, just wait. <laughs> just wait ten minutes. So. Uh, so I, okay. I want to. Want, uh, I recommend you to go to Phe An Tong Wai. Phe An. Tong Wai. Okay. So, so I go Phe An Tong. Yes. So I go Phe An Tong. Yes. It's so uh, this beautiful. This is a uh, first stage. Yeah, it's all Kenyan stage. Kenyan stage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. more stage. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what your feelings telling us to Myanmar? Yeah. Well, it's pretty complicated because my whole life I heard about Myanmar. Of course, it's a very famous country. Yes. In Canada, we think of Myanmar, we think of something very romantic, very um, mysterious. Oh, yeah. Because for a long time, it was more difficult to visit Myanmar, you know, in the past. Yeah. So everyone was thinking, what is it like there? But now it is more open to tourism. Yes. Yes. So when I flew into Yangon, first I was surprised at how modern the city was. Modern? Yeah, I yeah. was expecting it to be more older, like tra oh, yes. more traditional. Oh, yeah. traditional. Yes. 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 But yes. when I took the bus from the airport, the bus was new and air conditioned and modern, and there's cars everywhere, traffic everywhere. Oh, yes. Yes. I was expecting streets full of animals and kind of a more farming, oh. agricultural look. So, my first impression, I was surprised at Yangon, like a modern urban city. But then when you get to know the people and see the people, then you see a more traditional lifestyle, clothing for the women in particular. Yeah. Um, you're not dressed in yeah. traditional clothing. Yes, yes, but it's not that traditional. <laughs> no, <laughs> but so many of the women are dressed in the beautiful yeah. traditional oh, clothes. Yes. The men as well in the lungi. Yes. yes. And yeah, that, okay. um, even the tanaka. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the importance of Buddhism and the pagodas, yes, that lifestyle. Yes. So all of that um, was very interesting to learn about. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what do you prefer, uh, Yangon or Molenia? Wow, that's a difficult question. Um, yes. Because Yangon is much bigger yeah. and there are so many places to explore, the narrow streets, so many markets. Yeah. Everywhere I went in Yangon was something new to discover. But Malamine, or Malamine? Malamien. Malamien. Yeah. Malamien. Malamien. Yeah. Malamien. Yes. Malamien. Yes. Malamien. Yes. Malamien is much quieter. Yes. Oh, yes. I, when I got here, I started calling it a, a sleepy town. Sleepy town. <laughs> I mean, it's a city, right? Yeah, it's yes, the yes, fourth yes. biggest, but it seems like kind of a sleepy place, and you've got the beautiful riverside. Oh, yes. So yes. I like that here. It feels more friendly than Yangon. Oh, yes. yeah. oh I see. So, thank you for your help. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so thank much. So Thanks a lot. Also, yeah. Where's my can so, can you take Okay, photo? no problem. Yes. 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 Who, do you have to join the picture? <laughs> if, uh, uh, Safi? 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 Well, whatever you like. Uh, yeah. So please have me. Oh, you want me to do it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I can try. Yeah. I don't know if I... I'm not very good at selfies. Okay. Yeah, you can join the picture. Don't worry about the video. Come here. Okay. Please? Please? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. One, two, three. Try another one. Okay. Maybe I'll use my other finger. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. All right, you too. Nice to meet you. Okay. All of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Anyway, Bye-bye. Thank you. That was an interesting experience. There appear to be teams of students from a local school roaming around Malamien today. And their project is to interview a foreigner for 10 minutes. 
So they stopped me and asked if I could uh, talk to them for 10 minutes. And uh, that uh, I'm, I'm kind of used to that experience. It would happen a lot in Indonesia where students have to practice their English. I have a funny uh, way about those because I always try to give good value for money because if they ask a question and you just say yes, no, or one word, you know, the whole thing is, op is over very quickly and not that interesting. So I try to elaborate on my answer as much as I can just to sort of give some background and some more interesting details to my answer. But then I notice they're not listening because you know, they're so focused on the question and they're a little bit nervous. And there, there I am giving a speech like I'm in front of the United Nations and then their eyes are glazing over. You know, I give too much, too much value for money. The conversation can also be a little bit awkward because I simply cannot understand the names of local places and food and drink like when they pronounce it with a, you know, the Burmese <clears throat> or the, the local accent, whatever their accent is. So when they say to me, <clears throat> you should try this food or go to this place, I kind of just have to smile and nod, but I don't really understand what they're saying. You know, the name of the place or the name of the food. My ears just are not very skilled at deciphering sounds in other languages. Another team of students found me. They were racing by on a motorcycle, three of them on the uh, bike, and they spotted me and came running over. I didn't get any video of that interview because there were only the three of them, and two of them were interviewing me, and one of them was holding their uh, phone and recording it. So I couldn't give my camera to anyone else. <laughs> The requirement for their project is to record 10 minutes of interaction with a foreigner. And I guess it doesn't have to be 10 minutes of me speaking, it can be them speaking, you know, just as long as we're having a, a conversation. And it turns out when you start recording on a, a smartphone, 10 minutes is a lot longer than you'd think. <laughs> we seem to talk for a long time and then they kept asking the cameraman, you know, how long, how long has it been? And then he would say, you know, three more minutes, three more minutes. And then they would go, oh no, three more minutes. And then it would be two more minutes. I have a feeling the cameraman made a mistake because I've got a pretty good head for time passage. And I think we talked for a lot longer than 10 minutes. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. Maybe he uh, started recording late. I'm just walking along the river and I found this jetty, the Dawe Jetty. It's actually nice being underneath this uh, roof. That sun is particularly hot today. And there's the uh, riverside. Oh, it's actually really nice under here. Nice breeze off the river. No sun beating down. Hello. Inglava. This is a great dock. I wonder how old it is. The whole thing is made of wood and it is filled with uh, obstacles and uh, dangerous holes. <laughs> Kind of like a video game where you have to walk along and uh, not fall into any of these holes. I'm sort of feeling out every footstep as well to see whether the uh, wood is uh, rotten. I don't want to fall through into the water if I can help it. A 
now that is a boat. Man, this is a beast of a boat. Yeah, it looks like it's one of these uh, dredging boats. That's very interesting. So I guess all of this equipment pumps water and they dredge from the uh, bottom of the river and it flows in here and um, the gravel for s somehow or other ends up uh, in the bottom. Couldn't tell you exactly how this mechanism works. I always find this interesting because I'm a big fan of the uh, gold rush reality uh, TV series and they are constantly using uh, equipment like this for getting gold out of the ground. Wow. And you really do have to be careful walking around here. This dock is uh, reaching the end of its useful life. But look at that boat. This is like something that could be uh, could have been used in a water world. Here's more of a houseboat. These guys are smart. They've built themselves a tarpaulin shelter for protection from this brutal sun. Minglava. Minglava. Fishing? Passenger. Passenger. Yes. To where? To near Takumi uh, Mudo. Okay. Uh, How many passengers? Only, in... uh, more, only uh, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, where, 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 where do you go? Oh, me? Not me. No, I'm, I'm just asking a question. Oh, no, no, but no. for me, no, no. Just, uh, Only you might just uh, thirty-five thousand. Okay. You might just thirty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand, chat, to go. Mm. One person. One person. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you. Let's see it. I had a chat with a young man connected uh, with this, with these two boats here, and he said that they were uh, passenger boats, which I find uh, quite interesting. Of course, I have no idea what kind of a schedule they run on. I asked him where they go and he told me, but I couldn't really uh, make out the, the names of the places. But he said it would cost about 25, did he say 25,000 chat or 35? I think it was 25,000 chat per person to go on this boat to wherever it goes. He was asking me where I wanted to go. So maybe uh, I could have uh, rented the uh, the boat all by myself. <laughs> and he said it can handle 20 or 30 passengers. I have no idea how long the journey is, whether you sleep on this boat or what you do. Interesting. And there's the whole dock with the two passenger boats and then the uh, dredging boat behind it. Fascinating when you think about it from the human angle, you know, especially something like that dredging boat. It clearly has a kitchen on board and, you know, sleeping quarters and all that kind of thing. And I saw a young woman there. And I imagine that that woman and her husband and their children basically live and work on that boat. 
you know? All the different lives that we lead as humans, it's just astonishing in how someone ends up with that life, you know? And I assume they were kind of born into it, a family boat, family business, and perhaps owned by the man, and the woman marries him, and suddenly uh, she is uh, living on a dredging boat on the uh, river in Myanmar. Amazing. I spotted an open air kind of coffee shop and restaurant on my way to the Uzina Pagoda. So I made plans to stop here for at least a cold drink, if not something to eat. Looked like a really cool place. Just have to get across this busy road. And here it is here. And there's the sign. But I don't know what that means, of course. And I don't know what kind of food they uh, serve, but hopefully we'll figure something out. This looks interesting. They've got like a dim sum station over there. And then the main, uh, the main kitchen back there. And he has a nice bowl of noodles. Excuse me, what, what is this? <laughs> that, do you know which one on the menu? This one is that? Oh yeah. That that one there. Okay. Can I have uh, one? Yeah. Well, whew, so here I am. I didn't really even uh, sit down to look at the menu because. It's all in Burmese, and it wouldn't have a... Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Wouldn't have helped me anyway, you know, because I couldn't read anything. But I saw a man at a table there. The first meal I saw, actually, was like a bowl of noodles. And I've really been wanting just a bowl of noodles for a while. I don't know what kind of noodles they were or whether what, anything else is in there, but I just pointed that at that and said that's what I'd like. And I think this is what I ended up getting. The one right there that says uh, 2,000 chat. And I also got a bottle of water because uh, I really needed that. And somehow, I don't know how, I ended up with two cups of tea. I ordered tea, which is what I wanted, was this tea, you know, just your standard, uh, I think of it as standard milk tea here, chai. But then somehow we started discussing the tea and that led to me getting two tea. <laughs> so I've got like a regular plain tea and then a milk tea. Yeah, I just came down from the um, 
the Uzina Pagoda. That's where I was before I stopped here for uh, lunch. And it wasn't super, you know, super hot up there, but it was uh, pretty hot. So I'm glad to sit down in the shade and have a cool wind blowing over me. And I looked uh, at this place on Google Maps, and in English they call it the Min Si Sein Cafe. Right there. So I think that is where I'm having my lunch right now. And if you could read the menu, you would, uh, yeah, have a great time here. You could get all kinds of different food, I'm sure. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll take a picture of this menu and then uh, maybe stick it into the video and people can study it before they come to Myanmar. Good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so I think I did well. This looks really good. So there is my um, soup. I'm not sure what is in there yet. We'll find out in a minute. But it's got a really thick broth. Looks some um, sweet. So what all have we got in here? Looks like maybe egg. This could be egg. Not sure. Hmm. It is sweet. There's a sweet flavor to it. Bits of meat, probably chicken. And lots of noodles. Pretty sure this is Chinese food, if I had to guess. I've had similar dishes in the past. I just can never remember the names of anything. Ah, time to settle back and enjoy my lunch. I think this is uh, garlic over here. Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> and over there, <coughs> hot peppers, <coughs> very hot peppers. I'm having a little bit of trouble with the food because yesterday I was out walking around down by the river, which was like in the afternoon, and on impulse I got a big bag of those husband and wife snacks. And uh, well, I didn't realize it, but they came straight out of the oil, and I took one and popped it straight into my mouth and it was still like dripping with boiling oil and just burned the entire inside of my mouth. So the top of my mouth, tongue, it's all been burned yesterday, so it's kind of sensitive. So that is my bowl of noodles done. <clears throat> very high marks, it was very tasty. I actually went out today intending to get like local Myanmar food or traditional Mon food. Um, and that's what I came in here to get, to be honest. <laughs> But as soon as I walked in and I saw that everything was in the Burmese script, I knew it would be difficult to explain what I wanted. So as soon as I saw that man with a delicious looking bowl of uh, chow mein, is that what it is? As I said, I'm terrible with food. I don't even know the names of food uh, in English. 
and it's quite embarrassing because I think this is a very common Chinese dish that you can get anywhere in the world and everybody knows what it is and I've had it before but I, I honestly don't even know the name of it in English. But anyway, noodles, chicken, uh, egg, and then there's something special about that broth. What is it? It's, um, there's a word for it. I cannot think of the word. But overall, I really like this restaurant. I've seen some dishes go by that they're bringing to other tables, and I kept wanting to stop them and say, what is that, and what is that? And wanted to remember what all these dishes were because they all look so good. And even, uh, I don't know if he's in the picture or not, but a guy to my left has got like a big, tall glass of like diced fruit or diced vegetables in a broth that he's eating with a spoon. Looks quite interesting. I like the fact that it's open air, you know? It's got a nice high ceiling, kind of bamboo rattan ceiling. Nice tables, chairs with backrests. One thing it is lacking, um, up here anyway on this section, fans. So that's why I'm using my little uh, hand fan here to try and cool down a little bit. Other little notes. Um, I've noticed this in a couple of other restaurants recently that they have the lighters on the table for customers and then they put the lighter inside this piece of tubing. You know, it's like a, I think it's like a standard piece of um, plumbing that you can buy at a hardware store. And somebody figured out that the diameter is just wide enough to grip a lighter. So they put it in, they stick it inside this tubing and then put it on the table. And now they can move it from table to table and uh, everyone has access to a lighter. He's over there. On that table, maybe you can see all these little um, plastic cubes, transparent plastic cases, and those are all the individual cigarettes that you can buy, and they'll bring them to your table for you. And then uh, you light them with your handy little uh, cigarette, or your handy little lighter. Just looking around for other interesting things about this restaurant, and it is kind of like, a, it's a tea house. And as a tea house, they have snacks on the different tables where you sit down and you can just help yourself to the snacks. Again, my table doesn't have any snacks on it, but I see on some of the tables there's a pudding. So I think I'm gonna try some of the pudding. I'm, I think I'll just go uh, get one. Uh, okay. So here's some pudding. And, oh, and there's the, uh, another snack that they often have at the table. So here's a uh, pudding, some kind of caramel coating on top, comes with a little spoon. Ah, <laughs> they're bringing all the snacks to my table now. So we have a kind of a, um, I don't know what those are, kind of jelly cakes of some kind and they brought some uh, some bread to the table another snack but I have my eye on this uh, pudding so that's what we're going to try I want to call it a cus custard or something like that let's see what it tastes like Tastes like um, custard. There isn't a really strong flavor. No. It's very nice as a uh, after meal dessert. Oh, hey, <laughs> thank you. These guys are really taking good care of me. As soon as they realized I was interested in snacks, and they went to all the tables and brought me samples of all the others, and he brought me a nice little um, um, solid spoon instead of using the uh, plastic one.
I don't have to wait to the very end to give uh, Doug's verdict. Would I come here again? Absolutely, I'd come here every day. Great uh, seating, comfortable place, nice menu, nice people. Would I order that uh, soup again, that dish? Absolutely, love that. Would I have this uh, custard dessert again? Yes, so full marks right across the board. I have to come up with my own scale for giving a rating to places and food, really. I couldn't give this place full marks. For it to have full marks, there'd have to be a fan, you know, above my table or near my table, which there isn't. I think what you'd need to do in a restaurant like this is come at a busy time, and then you can just go around to all the tables and see what everyone else is having. If you see something you like, you just point at it. You know, that would almost as good as having uh, pictures on the menu. And I got a, um, you know, just a basic bottle of water from the cooler. And me being me, I want everything to be ice cold, you know, as cold as it can possibly be. And this was barely cold at all. I mean, it was in a freezer, like in a cooler, but they have it set to a very, uh, not a very cold temperature. So I can't give the place full, full marks. But in terms of the food and the service, very high marks. So there it is behind me, the Min Si Sein Cafe and Tea House, basically. My lunch is done. One or two things I didn't mention about the place, they actually have free Wi-Fi all through here. And there appears to be two different seating areas. Where I was was kind of a casual I guess coffee drinking area, which I didn't know. On the other side is a little bit more formal, kind of sunken down a different layer where you have meals, I guess, and there they actually do have fans overhead. I just happened to sit in the part of the cafe where they didn't have fans, but you could sit where they do have fans. And when it comes to paying, it's the usual process here. You basically make a kissing sound at someone, which I couldn't do, but someone came to my table scanned all the empty plates, calculated instantly what I owed, and told me how much in English, and I paid them, and I was all set to go. And now my lunch is done, and I'm heading out into the hot city of Malamine. Right next door to the Min Si Sein restaurant, by the way, is a St. Matthew's Church. There it is there, set against a beautiful blue sky. I could be wrong about this, but I remember reading that St. Matthew's here is the very first Anglican church in all of uh, Myanmar. Even the schools here have a flair to them. Take a look at this uh, number nine basic education high school behind me, or in front of me. Three stories high with a big wooden structure up on top. It's called a high school, but I see all kinds of uh, little kids coming out. So it seems more like a primary school and the voices Sounds like the chatter of young kids, not a high school crowd. But... <laughs> Just all of these uh, taxi trucks waiting for school to let out. I think school is almost over for the young kids today. And everybody's uh, getting picked up by their parents or by taxi drivers to take them home. that crowd. Mm. 
it's uh, such a common feature to almost every Asian city I've been to. You go anywhere near a school in the afternoon around the time when school lets out, it's just total chaos because all the kids get picked up. I mean, when I was a kid, of course, <laughs> we just rode our bikes home or we walked home, one or the other. Nobody came to uh, pick us up. But everywhere I've been in Asia, you know, all the parents come to pick up their children or the kids take taxis home, you know, motorcycle taxis. So if you ever get near any kind of a school, you end up in a uh, car and person jam. <laughs> 